Greetings, everyone. Welcome to your first online chemistry class. Conveniently, we just finished up unit 7 slash 8, so we're on to unit 9. So this is lesson 1. This is the format of how it'll be, right? You're going to have the slides and then my face here. So um, let's get into it. So learning goals today, all right, we got six. Now, no math, all right, so just some definitions. We're going to talk about pure substances and mixtures. We're going to talk about heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. Compare the properties of suspensions, colloids, and solutions. We're going to talk about solutes and solvents. We're going to talk about the factors that affect the rate at which a solute dissolves in a solution. That's fun words. And then we're going to distinguish among saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated solutions. Okay, so on, on campus, in our topics area, you will find a link to all of our essential questions for Unit 9. There's something like 14 of them. These are just some definitions we're going to start out with. So first up, some definitions for you. First of all, we need to just talk about a little bit of, about what is a pure substance and what is a mixture. All right, now, a pure substance is something that is just one element or just one molecule. It's nothing like mixed. So from my personal collection, I have a couple pure substances. For example, nickel metal. All right, nickel metal is a pure substance. It's pure nickel. It's all nickel atoms. That's it. I also have an example of a molecule that's a pure substance. This is pure caffeine I extracted from coffee. All right, so it's just caffeine. Yes, it's a molecule that's made of lots of atoms but it's just one molecule, so it's a pure substance. All right? That's what a pure substance is. All right? It's one thing. A mixture is when you have multiple things. All right? and there's two kinds of mixtures. There's heterogeneous mixtures and homogeneous mixtures. So two different kinds of mixtures we're gonna talk about, heterogeneous and homogeneous. Let's start by talking about heterogeneous mixtures. So by definition, a heterogeneous mixture does not blend smoothly. All right, hetero has to do with different, right? So they're different, they don't blend. Um, one type of heterogeneous mixture would be a suspension, all right? It's a, it's a mixture that has particles that settle out if left untouched. So you could take a cup of water and sand and stir it together and it would mix, but it wouldn't blend smoothly and the sand would fall out of the water eventually, all right? That's a suspension. Um, there's a fun word, a thixotropic mixture all right, is a suspension in which there's a solid mixture on the bottom and water on top, but when it's stirred, it flows like a liquid, but sits like a solid. All right, a lot of words there, but it's toothpaste. All right, it flows like a liquid, but it sits like a solid. It's thixotropic, it's a type of suspension. All right, if you go through, you know, if you go to your cabinet right now, get some toothpaste and like touch it, right, you'll find out that it's a heterogeneous mixture. There's like gritty parts and soft parts and it's not well blended, all right? So when you think of heterogeneous mixtures, think about like sand and water, oil and water, right? Or toothpaste, all right? Um, an important type of heterogeneous mixture is called a colloid. This is a weird word, colloid. A colloid is a mixture of intermediate sized particles, specifically between one nanometer and a thousand nanometers in diameter that do not settle out of solution. So it's heterogeneous, it's not smoothly blended, but they stay suspended, right? The particles stay suspended in the solution. They don't come out eventually, like sand will fall out of water or oil and water will separate. Colloids are different, right? For example, blood. Your blood is a colloid. There's lots of different things in it that are not well blended that, that'll just stay mixed for a long time. Same thing with milk. Right, there's like solid fats, and then there's water, and then there's a couple other things, right? Like some sugars, which don't get blended together. They just sit next to each other separately, right? So th that's what we call a colloid, all right? Well, we're gonna talk about the properties of these different types of heterogeneous mixtures later, but just know that that's what a colloid is, all right? Now, colloids are weird, all right? They move in a jerky, erratic, sort of motion, and we call that motion Brownian motion, right? So if you have like a candle and you blow it out and there's a lot of smoke, and if you were to blow at the smoke, right, the smoke, which is a colloid, would kind of jerk back and forth, 
All right, it would like zigzag a little bit, kind of hang in the air, but move in a jerky fashion. All right, that's a unique property of colloids called Brownian motion. Right. Now, one way you can identify whether a uh, solution is a colloid or not is to shine light through it. Colloids often appear to be well blended, right? Not like oil and water, which uh, a typical heterogeneous mixture. You look at it, you know it's heterogeneous. A colloid often looks homogeneous. It looks well blended. But if you shine light through it, you can very quickly tell that it's not. All right? It's something called the Tyndall effect, and the light will scatter off all the little particles that are hanging in there. So I'm going to show you a picture of that. So the Tyndall effect. Right? You see on the left, a homogeneous mixture, something like uh, water and sugar, right? or water and salt, where they dissolve easily. And you see on the right, a colloid, something like milk. Right, which appears to be well mixed, but is in fact a heterogeneous mixture. All right, so you see, it, it, it sort of glows. Right, the, all the little particles in there sp scatter the light all over the place. They spread the light out. So that's what we call the Tyndall effect. That's how you can tell if it's a colloid or a homogeneous mixture. Now, let's talk about what a homogeneous mixture is. Right, homogeneous mixtures are solvents with completely dissolved solutes, meaning there are two things that are completely dissolved. All right, salt water is a homogeneous solution, right? You can't see the salt in water. In fact, we can see that right now. So I have, again, out of my personal chemistry supply, some water. All right, you can see it's clear water. And I have some salt, sodium chloride. So we can see that when we take our water, we can add salt to it. And initially, the salt sort of pools at the bottom, All right? But you can whip out your handy dandy spoon, mix it together. And you can see that it mixes, all right? The water dissolves the salt. You don't have any chunks on the bottom anymore, All right? That's what we call a homogeneous mixture. Right, it's completely dissolved. Another good example of a homogeneous mixture would be the air. Right, there's oxygen and carbon dioxide and argon and nitrogen all over the place, and they don't easily separate. You shine a light through the air and it's just air. Right, there, it's well mixed. Or perhaps uh, an alloy, something like steel, which is made of uh, carbon and iron. All right, steel. You don't see little black carbon chunks in the iron. No, it, it just looks like one metal, right? I have an alloy here, again, from my chemicals. This is an alloy called Wood's alloy, right? It's made of three or four different metals, right? But it appears to be just one metal, right? You, there's no chunks or separations or anything like that. Um, Wood's alloy is neat because it will melt at something like 80 or 90 degrees Celsius, meaning you could put it in a cup of coffee and it would turn into a liquid metal, which is kind of cool. Um, but I keep this one solid because I don't want it to run away. Now, um, solutions, which are homogeneous mixtures, can be solid, liquid, or gas, right? Although when we're talking about solutions, we're usually talking about liquids, right? There's alloys in the the atmosphere, but usually when we talk about a homogeneous mixture, it's, it's a liquid. All right, so forming solutions. Some combinations of chemicals form solutions and some don't. All right, we need to get some vocab words here. So number one, a solute is what is dissolving, right? And a solvent is the liquid that does the dissolving, right? In the case of our salt and water, the water is the solvent, right? The liquid which is dissolving the thing. And the salt is the solute, right? The thing which is being dissolved. So the solute goes in the solvent, all right? The solute is dissolved into the solvent, all right? So the chemical that dissolves in a solvent can be said to be soluble in that solvent. That's quite the sentence, I know, all right? But if something will dissolve in something, it's soluble, right? So salt is soluble in water. It dissolves, right? Oil is not, right? If you pour oil into water, it doesn't dissolve. It just sits on top. That would be not soluble or insoluble, all right? 
two liquids, no, no, that, you know, the whole soluble thing with the solute and the solvent is for a solid and a liquid. If you have two liquids that are soluble in each other, um, that's what we call miscible. Not soluble, but miscible. For example, if you take water and mix it with acetic acid, you get vinegar. Right? If you pick up a jug of vinegar, it just looks like a clear liquid, because well, it is. They, they dissolve in each other. You, you make vinegar. Um, unlike, say, oil and water, which are immiscible. All right? Two liquids you pour together and they don't mix. That's immiscible. So soluble means the solid will dissolve in the liquid. Miscible means the two liquids will mix. Insoluble means the solid will not dissolve in the liquid, like sand and water. And immiscible means the two liquids will not mix, like oil and water. So it's a lot of vocab words, but write them down, get them straight in your mind. Solvent, solute, soluble, miscible, immiscible, insoluble. How hard could it be? All right. So let's talk a little bit about concentration. All right. So the concentration, this is a vocab word, the concentration of a solution is a measure of how much solute is dissolved in the solvent. All right. So how much salt is in this water would be a concentration. All right. If you have twice as much, it would be twice as concentrated. If you have half as much, it would be half as concentrated. All right. Qualitatively, all right, which is to say just sort of eyeballing it, a solution with a lot of solute is what we call concentrated, and a solution with only a little solute is what we call dilute. All right, so in your tap water, there's a very small amount of salt. It's very dilute. All right? It'd be like one or two parts per million. All right? you, you, would, you can't even notice it. However, this solution where I poured a ton of salt into it would be concentrated. Right? And it's concentrated because there's a lot of salt for the amount of water. Right, if I poured this much salt into a pool, it'd be pretty dilute. But pouring into this much water, it's concentrated. Now, mathematically, quantitatively, there's a lot of ways to talk about concentration, but we'll save the math for a later day. All right. All right. Now, the process of dissolving a solute in a solvent to make a solution is called solvation. All right. I imagine if one was learning English, this this unit would be very not fun, right? So many S words in a row. But solvation is where you dissolve a solute in a solvent to make a solution. It's the process of making a solution. All right. Um, we're going to look at a bunch of things about, you know, under what circumstances will certain solvents dissolve in certain solutions? Or well, yeah, rather, under what circumstances will a particular solute dissolve in a particular solvent to make a particular solution? Under what circumstances will they not mix? How can we talk about those at the, at the molecular level? Um, we're going to talk about polarity and bonding and intermolecular forces. But again, that's for a later date. Uh, so something to note. When it comes to solvation, when it comes to making solutions, there are different factors that affect it. All right. If you want to get the salt to dissolve in the water more quickly, you can do one of three things. All right, you can agitate it, right? So you can stir it or shake it or move it around. That will make it dissolve faster, right? You could test this at home. If you if you take a teaspoon of salt in a coffee mug of still water and a teaspoon of salt in a coffee mug where you stir it, the one that agitates will dissolve much faster, right? Solvation will happen much faster. You could increase the surface area, number two. So if you grind the salt very, very fine, it will dissolve quickly. If you put a huge salt block in there, it won't dissolve very quickly at all. Right? So something with a larger surface area will dissolve faster. It will undergo solvation faster. And finally, you could heat it up. All right? So if you heat it up, it dissolves faster. If you cool it down, it dissolves slower. Right? It's easier to dissolve sugar in hot water than in cold water. Right? You probably know that. If you make hot tea, it's very easy to put sugar in it. If you just take a cup of cold water and like iced tea and try and dissolve sugar in it, it it's awful. Right, you go to the restaurant, of course, not today you don't go to the restaurant, you stay at home and eat, right? But, you know, you would go to the restaurant and you, you pour your sugar in the cup and you, and you try and get it to dissolve in the iced tea and it doesn't go very well. Well, that's because when things are cold, solvation occurs very slowly. And when they're warm, solvation occurs very quickly. So if you want something to dissolve faster, you agitate it, you increase the surface area and you heat it up. If you want something to dissolve slower, 
you leave it very still, you use big chunks, and you make it very cold. All right. So those are the factors which affect solvation. All right. Now, we can also talk about some more vocab words about solvents and solutes and solutions. We can talk about something called solubility. All right. There's basically three kinds of solutions. All right. There's unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated solutions. An unsaturated solution is one that has less solute than it could. It has more room for solute. So right now, you can see the water here, right, is mostly dissolved. The salt is mostly dissolved. It could hold more salt. It's unsaturated, all right? It has more room. However, if I were to take the rest of this container and dump it in there, it won't all dissolve, right? We would make it a saturated solution, which means it would have the maximum amount of dissolved solute. It can't take any more. It's full, right? A certain amount of, can, of water can only dissolve so much salt. If you have a cup of water and a thousand pounds of salt, it's going to be saturated, right? It can't take it all. And finally, there's something which is called a super saturated solution. Now, this is very weird. It's when you make a saturated solution at, say, a high temperature, and then you cool it down, meaning Let's say a liter of water can hold 100 grams of salt when it's hot and 50 grams of salt when it's cold. Well, you get the water really hot, you add 100 grams of salt, and it's saturated. All the salts dissolve, and it's all it can hold. But if you cool it down very carefully, you can keep that salt in solution even though it shouldn't, even though it's max capacity, even though, even though once you cool it all the way to cold, the water should only hold 50 grams of salt, you can keep it at 100 grams of salt, as long as you don't agitate it. All right, um, it's very unstable though. Right? If you were to do that and then shake the glass, all the salt would just pop right out of solution and fall to the bottom like that. It's very pretty to look at, but very difficult to do at home instead of in the lab. But three types of solutions, unsaturated, saturated, and supersaturated. Um, most solutions are unsaturated, some are saturated. You rarely encounter a supersaturated solution in real life. All right, so that's it. It's just a bunch of vocab. What's a solute? What's a solvent? What does it mean to dissolve? What's a heterogeneous, homogeneous mixture? Stuff like that. So go through your notes, look at the slides on on campus, and write down all the bold words and write down in your own words a good definition for them. All right, and this will help you learn the vocab. Now, many of these things you're probably familiar with already. You know what it means to dissolve. You've probably heard of a solution, right? But write them down. It'll help you remember them. What else are you going to do cooped up at home all day besides play Modern Warfare or whatever you're doing? So a couple things about homework. So homework number one, stay home. All right, Governor Reynolds is very serious. Stay home. Don't spread the virus um, unless you got a shot for vulnerable family members or seek medical care, obviously. Second thing. All right, you have a homework, but it's very easy, and you get two points just for doing it. You have to go to on campus to assignments, and you'll find an, a, a discussion assignment. You're going to have to go into that discussion board and post an answer to the question. So let me take you over to the page. All right, so we'll go here. We'll go to on campus. All right, you can see here, like chemistry class. Here on the announcements area, you'll see you know, the schedule for the week. Right now, you see the introduction video of what we're doing. Hopefully, you already watched that. Um, in topics here, you'll find like the slides. You go to online learning. There's the slides right there. The same slides I'm showing you right now. Um, and finally, here's what you're looking for. Assignments. All right, assignments. It'll be chemistry discussion assignment one for March 25th. So it's assigned on March 25th. It's due on March 27th, so assigned on Wednesday do on Friday. What you'll do, you'll just click on it and it'll give you the prompt. The prompt for today is how are you feeling about online learning? Do you think this is going to be easier or harder than normal class? So you click add a new response, you give me at least two sentences, you get two points, all right, and uh, that's it. It's just showing your participation, it's showing that you've been able to see the video and that you can access on campus okay and uh, that way we'll be able to make sure you are getting everything you need. Now, um, if you have any questions, 
about how to do the homework or where the slides are or, or I'm lost. What do you mean when you say colloid or whatever? Um, feel free to email me or send me an on-campus message. Um, most of your questions can probably be answered like that. However, um, you know, as we get into it, if you have some questions about the math or that sort of thing, feel free to send me an email. I'm free Tuesday through Friday, 1 to 3 p.m. to schedule meetings with you if you want to, you know, work over the math together, that sort of thing, so we can schedule an online meeting that way. Just send me an email if you need one of those. All right, no problem. Or an on-campus message. So that's it for today. Just definitions of solutes and solvents. All right, by Friday, get on here to the board and post your answer to this discussion. Um, Friday night, I'm going to grade them, and I'm going to give all that data to you know the administration so we can make sure that everyone's participating and has access to everything they need. Um, so uh, that's it for today. I'll see you on Friday.